Hello. Um, so today I thought it'd be fun to uh, do something kind of springy, uh, get our minds off of the craziness that's happening in the world today. So um, I thought maybe we could do a, a little bunny, a cute little bunny for, uh, for Easter um, or just for spring. So um, a lot of the times with these videos, you're going to hear me say the same things um, over and over. So, um, you know, the same rules apply each time we do these videos. Um, and hopefully every time you will, um, you know, get better and better, learn new things and feel more comfortable. And uh, yeah, the point is, as long as you get every, every painting you do, you know, you learn something and uh, you get a little bit better. And that's where we want to be. So. All right, so um, this is a little bit different than um, what we usually do uh, in the sense where we have to draw it out. So um, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna use this middle brush so everybody should have these three brushes. I should, you should have a, a nice big one. I'm not sure if we're gonna use this big one for this guy, for these smaller canvases, I typically just use these two, but I always have these three um, no matter which kind of which size canvas I have so this is a 12 by 12 uh, canvas um, but you really can do this on any size um, if you did it on um, something more rectangular obviously there would be more room up top um, but you could do this um, this works on 12 by 12 14 by 14 um, and the kits that I send out come with a 12 by 12 canvas so I wanted to have a couple 12 by 12 painting sessions for people to get started so um, all right, so you should have your paper plate, your canvas set up, and your egg carton. Now, I put a lot of paint in my egg carton just so I don't have to get up uh, in the middle and refill anything. So, um, and you have your napkin and your smock, and we're ready to go. The first thing that we're going to do is actually draw the bunny out. So, we, we're going to actually sort of create a lead color, in, like a pencil color. So, we're going to start with two scoops of white, and we're just going to add a tiny bit of black to that okay so you want like a gray color all right just like that and everybody's gonna get a different color gray so don't worry if your gray is not the same as mine and we're gonna just draw it out so you can either chuck that in the water uh, if it's easier use your smaller brush to draw it out with um, so when you do stuff like drawing um, it's always nice to put like an imaginary grid on the canvas. So if there's an imaginary line coming down here, um, you can see how far the bunny's ears over that way and that way. If you put an imaginary line uh, here, you see how where the top of the head is. And that being said, the top of the head sort of falls in the middle of the canvas. So starting is always the hardest part for people because you're really going from nothing to something. And you really um, don't know where you're going yet. So, uh, you know, let's just get there. And, uh, once you're there, it'll be a little bit easier. So, um, now that I put kind of like a roundabout place, I know there's going to be flowers. I know you can't actually see the top of the bunny's head, but we're going to draw it out anyway. Um, so I also want you to take into account the negative space. I know that this bunny is the positive space and everything around it is the negative space. So it's just as important to look at this blue shape here that's behind the bunny around the bunny as it is to look at the actual bunny shape okay doesn't mean that it has to be exactly like that you know it everybody's is going to be different and even when i do mine mine's going to be different than that one so um but i'm just going to put in a few things so you can kind of help gauge um how big and small where things are um composition wise um so i'm going to put the the two bunny uh paws here again look at how close it is to the edge does it have to be that close no Absolutely not. Does it have to be that size? No. Um, also, things change as we go. So see how I'm just kind of making it very sketchy? It, all those lines don't matter, okay? None of that matters, okay? So then we're gonna have, kind of have a shape going up. Sort of like a, a pear shape. It's very pear-esque. So don't worry about all these crazy lines right now. They're all gonna be covered up later. Don't worry if it's not even. Um, we're gonna actually paint all this in gray, which might not make sense to you now, but <laughs> you'll see how we're doing it. So just keep it simple um, as you go. Don't overthink it. We go, we know we get into the details uh, way later. So right now we're really just sketching it out. So 
look at the bunny, the bunny's ear, see how close it goes to the top, you know, of, of the uh, canvas. You can just put a little mark there if it helps. And you're gonna have one bunny ear here, one bunny ear here, and it's really impossible to make it the same exact size unless you're using a ruler, which I don't really like to measure anything out. I eyeball everything. So I have like 100 holes in my walls because I never measure out when I hang <laughs> any of my, my pictures. So another thing is you want to break things down into, uh, into shape or a recognizable shape. So if you look at this, take out of your mind that this is a bunny ear and think about what shape that looks like. Does it look like an almond? I'm thinking it looks like, a, like an almond shape. So that's what I have in my mind. Um, a long oval, I mean, associate it with some kind of shape. Um, and as we go, and you can, you know, as we go, this thing will come out more. Same thing over here, you know, have your bunny shape. And again, don't worry about it. it's exactly the same on one side as the other because um, none of that really matters. And in real life, does is a bunny perfectly symmetrical? No. And also, this is acrylic paint, so if you want to change something later, it'll be dry enough for you to do that. So don't don't worry about it. All right, so now I'm gonna throw this in my water. And I'm gonna take my other paintbrush, which is wet now. So it doesn't have to be super clean, but it does have to be super dry. Um, so dry it off. And water likes to get stuck in this metal part here. So make sure that's really, really dry. So we're gonna work in layers. So we're gonna work on the bunny, then we're gonna hop to the background. Then we're gonna come back to the bunny, go to the background. And we're gonna kinda let each section dry, okay? So roll your sleeves up and we're going in. So you're gonna be using this gray again. So what I want you to do is I want you to just paint this all in gray, okay? Nice and thin. Don't worry about if you can't see, you know, where the, the, the head ends and the paws begin, just cut, just paint it all in. So I don't have any music going because I feel like it interferes when it's coming through your speakers. So plus you might want to listen to something different than I listen to. So put your favorite music on, get your little studio set up anywhere. You know, you feel good if you have an extra room in your house. Literally all you need is a corner. <laughs> this space isn't a big studio. This is the corner of my basement. So that's all you need. And it's always set up. It's always here. I can always hop in and paint whatever I want. I used to paint on the kitchen table, but then I had to, every time I made a meal, I'd have to clean it all up and put it all back. So I opted to kind of have my little studio space in the basement, but it's kind of cool down here. So that's why I was kind of avoiding it. But I have a space heater and it's good and it's getting kind of warm out. So it works much better now. I also like to light candles. I like to have my incense going just for some ambiance. If you hear any banging noises, that's my kids wrestling upstairs. You could just ignore. That's another thing about having a nice space in the basement is because I could just close the door and listen to the tornado go through upstairs while I'm safe down here. So when you're coloring the, when you're painting the uh, bunny in, just make sure it's nice and thin because this has got to be dry by the time we come back to it. Okay. And I will be running out of paint, which I always do. That's okay. Don't worry about where all this pink's gonna go because by the time I come back here, this is gonna be all dry. All right, so I ran out of gray, so I'm gonna make some more. Um, and it really doesn't have to be the exact same color. If you can get it close, that's cool. And as you can see, I don't really wash my brush. If you've painted with me before, you know that I have a thing where I'm just lazy and I like to go fast, so. I don't really wash my brush. So the way I get away, get around that is I'll, instead of dipping my burnt dirty brush in the middle of the pile of paint, I'll just scoop it out of the edge. So I hope everybody's uh, doing good with their uh, quarantining. <laughs> That's a word. Um, 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy world out there. And uh, I'm glad you guys are taking the time to uh, paint because I don't know about you, but when I paint, I really don't think about anything. So it's definitely my meditation. And uh, it's definitely something that you need even more nowadays. And it's it's nice. It's nice spending time with my kids. Um, definitely gets crazy at times when they're fighting or wrestling and I want to pull my hair out. But then we'll just do some art. <laughs> and it brings them back down to earth. So same, same thing <laughs> with me. So... Um, all right, so after you have the whole bunny painted in, just anywhere you see there might be a little bit thicker, just kind of smooth it out. Then you're going to wash that brush off. If you're drinking coffee, make sure maybe put that on the opposite side. I have my LaCroix here, so it's a can, so it's, it's much less likely I'm going to put my paintbrush in there, so... All right, so for the background, I opted to do a, uh, a turquoise. Feel free to not do a turquoise. Feel free to do whatever you know you want to do. I'm going to stick with the turquoise. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that clean, a clean brush. Make sure you clean your brush and dry it off really, really good. I'm going to do four scoops of blue here. Okay. Now here's where the laziness comes in. I should really wash my brush, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to take uh, some yellow from the edge here. And I am going to mix it in. It's hard to tell what kind of turquoise you have until you start adding your white. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna scoop the white from the edge. And if you, if you need to wash your brush off for your soul, do it. You know, just because I don't wash my brush in between every time I switch a color doesn't mean that you don't have to, or you don't. You you could do whatever you want. This is, you know, your time. You do it the way you want. So I'm gonna add some more white. It's my second scoop of white to four scoops of blue and one scoop of yellow. Again, your preference, of, you know, it's it's totally up to you. There's a million different turquoises in the world. I probably won't get to the same turquoise I have there. We shall see, this is very dark. So I'm gonna keep on adding some more white until I get, sometimes I don't know what color I want until I see it. And if you're doing any kind of purples or anything, purple's very dark when you, when you start to mix it until you add that white. It's very, very dark. All right, let's see. It's still very, very dark. All right, this might be better. So you'll need a lot of paint anyway because, uh, we have that whole background, so. Then you're gonna take it and you're gonna paint all around. Again, keep it very, very light. You might wonder why we made the uh, bunny gray. And the reason why we did that is because when you paint white over top of it, it gives it a good dimension. Even though you look at this and you're like, oh, I see white, but you really can see some grays coming through. Plus it's easier to see where, how you're drawing the bunny and stuff, where, where the bunny is rather than keeping the, you know, it's kind of using the background. Cause I guess you could do that too. You could not paint the bunny at all and keep it the canvas color, but that's no fun. More fun to just draw it out. Don't worry about the shape of the bunny's head or anything like that yet. Um, definitely do the sides. This is a good time to do the sides. If you didn't do the sides with the gray, you can go back and do that. I totally forgot. And I know it's going to be very, you're going to see very, you know, a lot of your brush strokes. You're going to see it very transparent. Don't worry about that right now because we're going to hop to the bunny and then hop back to the background. And we're gonna do a second coat, which is much, much faster. So um, don't try not to get too obsessed with making your bunny look like mine. And if you're not, that's great. But there's some people out there that get very funny if, if theirs doesn't look like exactly like somebody else's. And you know, my job really is to 
teach you things, you know, technique skills. And then I also, though, want you to keep your own style. And you might not think you have a style, but you absolutely have a style. You know, we have a signature, the way you write your name. That is, you know, you write it in your handwriting, which is your style of writing. So you use the exact same hand to paint. So you have a style of painting. And I want you to keep that because that's what, you know, that's what going to museums is about. You know, we don't, if we all have the same style and all our artwork look the same, their museums would be quite boring. So, yeah, embrace your style. And then after you paint for a while, you'll want to take many more risks. You know, I know in the beginning, people just kind of want to stick to, to stick to the, um, same exact steps that I'm doing and that's totally I totally get it but there's gonna be a point where you're gonna to want to venture out because you'll be braver and that's good and that comes in time don't rush it and try not to get too stressed if you find that you're being very stressed and you want to give up maybe just pause it take a break come back to it So um, the reason why I do the edges, and you do not have to do the edges if you don't want to, the reason why I do it is because it just looks better on the wall when you hang it up. You don't even need to put a frame on it or anything like that. I'm gonna switch to my gray because I forgot to do the gray bunny on the bottom. Not my brushes here. All right, so I know some of you know this already, but if you don't wash your brushes and you keep them dirty out on the table, acrylic paint will harden and your brush will be ruined. So it's important for you to treat your brushes nice. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go back to the gray. And we're actually gonna do a second coat, but I'm gonna do the bottom. And this is just me being kind of anal about it because nobody's really going to see the bottom of the paint of the, the canvas. I just, but I know it's there, so I got to do it. So everybody's different. You just do it the way you want to do it. All right. So I got some, some dirt in there. We just spent the past three hours making a path for us to hike on in our woods because we live on a bunch of acres. So I think we cleared out about a half a mile so far. So we got a long way to go. <laughs> but at least we'll have a nice hiking trail because I'm feeling those will be closed too all around. Anyway, that's why I have dirt on my hands, <laughs> if you're wondering. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run out of gray. So... Not a big deal. Just make more. Try to get it. It's kind of, you know, like the color you had. It's not exactly the same. It's not a big deal. Okay, but I do want it, you to make sure that it's nice and um, thin, all your paint's nice and thin. Otherwise, we won't be able to do those beautiful flowers on there, so. going to be some amazing, amazing artwork in people's houses after this whole thing is over. I'm sure people are going to get quite creative. This is a perfect time to do those things that you never got around to doing. Build that thing, fix that thing. I don't know. I know I've been very productive. This being one of them, I've wanted to do online classes for so long and I just never had the time just like everybody else doesn't have the time. So now I have plenty of time and it's the perfect timing actually. And uh, 
know it's not the same as, you know, doing it one-on-one -on -one or live or in a big group. It's totally not the same at all, but it's the next best thing. And maybe there's some aspects of it that are better because they kind of, you can pause it when you want to. You can do it at your leisure. You can work on it over, you know, as long as you as long as you want. More than one hour. You can work on it for days. So maybe there's a little, a little bit less pressure. Maybe you feel like you have a little bit less pressure. And uh, I've also made kits that I will be shipping out probably next week. So look out for those, and that'll have everything. You guys will need to paint if you don't have any of this stuff at home. So it'll have exactly what I have, an easel. I'll give you one of these canvases, exact same paintbrushes, exact same a carton, paper plate, smock. And then you can just hop on YouTube. And hopefully, as this goes on, I'd like to do one of these as much as I can, as, as much as my, my children will let me. <laughs> In between all the digging and raking in the woods. All right, so what I'm doing is right now I wash my brush off and then now I'm just doing a second layer on my background. And again, try to keep it nice and thin. So if you look at this bunny, um, on here you can see that the background's quite streaky. So we're actually gonna go back later. We're gonna kind of do brush strokes up and down. So I want you to take really take your time right now in the background, try not to go very fast because we want our bunny to, to be nice and dry. Okay, but since Later, we're going to be doing a lighter uh, version of this color. I want you to start kind of doing brush strokes up and down like that. Nice fluid strokes. And your, bat, your first layer might not be completely dry. Don't worry about that. We'll work on the bunny for a bit, so it's a little dry. But you can see with the, the difference between the one layer and the two. This is the one, and this is the two. So it's much, much different. So as I do my second coat, I try to start where I started painting. You know, so if you started your back of your first layer over here, when you get to here, you want to start your second layer over here because that would be the driest part. So I'm not used to quiet. I usually either listen to music or like a really good podcast. There's a lot of really, really good podcasts out there. I'm like loving the paranormal stuff. So I love listening to, there's like 10,000 paranormal podcasts. So and there's literally a podcast for, I think, anything you could possibly be interested in. My kids tested it out. They were calling out, oh, is there a podcast about this? Lo and behold, yep. That, lo and behold, yep. So... This is fun, but I really miss my students. I can't wait until this is over and I can see everybody again and we can paint together again. So, um, just because I'm done doesn't mean, you know, don't let that rush you or anything like that. Um, but basically, this is the foundation of what we're doing.
This is the base of what we're doing. Um, and I'll talk, I'll let you guys kind of keep going and I'm going to talk to you about it uh, for a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about what we're going to do. So my, the bunny, mine, because I have this bright light on here, I can see that this background is still a teeny tiny bit, still wet in certain areas. But um, I'm going to probably have you guys paint a little bit of lightness on the background and let that bunny just dry just a tiny bit before we get back into that. Um, and the way I'm, what I'm going to have you guys do is just add, see I have a big old pile of turquoise here, so I'm just going to add white to like half my pile. And I want to keep, I want to definitely keep some just in case, really it's just just in case. So you just want to mix a color that's just a little bit lighter than what you had. And my brush is so gooey, so I like to just wash it off. dry it off and water I don't know if I said it on this video but water gets stuck in this metal part it loves to get stuck there and especially now when we have a paint all over our canvas so you it just acts like a sponge and if you go like this water will just come out and it I mean it's fixable but it's better not to even have it done so what I did with that guys I just kind of took a lighter color and I went down just kind of just did streaks like that and you could probably, I doubt you could even see this, to be honest with you. Let me see if you can see it through. I might make mine a tad lighter so you guys can see it through the camera. And of course, this is not, again, I'm gonna say this all the time, it's not about you guys doing exactly what I'm doing. Like, you really, you make decisions. Um, if you don't like the way that this looks coming down, all this, these streaks, don't, don't do it. It's your painting. You're in control. Don't worry if it goes up into the gray. I want you to have nice, fluid brush strokes. And you'll see why it does not matter. And you may want to go a little bit lighter, too. Like, you might want to go a lot lighter. Maybe experiment and have your streaks kind of have some lighter whites in there. rustic looking you don't have to hold you don't have to really push down too hard on that brush and you know it's fun about doing these streaks and stuff like that you could go back if you want to and that's why I left the original color you can always go back to that original color if you kind of put brush strokes and you're like hey I don't really I didn't mean to put that much white or that that much paint I want it to go back the way it was you know there's no undo button unfortunately but you can go back to your original color and you know tone it down or cover it up that's acrylic paint is really cool like that there's really nothing you could do to that's gonna ruin it I mean you could I've painted a whole canvas black I've started a painting with a huge group you start one of the, this this particular painting uh, had a had a bl completely black background, and it was like a bouquet. And I had them instead of painting black around all these flowers, I just had them paint the whole canvas black first, and it dried. And then we painted on top of it. So, and that was black. So yes, it's very forgiving. If that makes it less scary for you, I hope it does. But like anything, you'll see that. You'll, as we go, you'll see it. So what I want you to do with the background, I want you to spend a little bit of time. And I want you to make it the way you want it. Go back to the original color, maybe. Maybe add a little white. It's totally up to you. Maybe add a little, another color to accent it. It's totally up to you. But I want you to kind of, we're going to fin it, we're going to just complete this background so we don't have to worry about it later, except for maybe some touch-ups. But what we're also doing 
is we're biding time for that money to dry. And that's really how I do this. I kind of work on one section and it let, let other sections dry. Um, and that being said, I, you know, the way I teach isn't the only way to teach, obviously. Um, you might go to a paint place or have a private lesson or have to do one of these online where, you know, the instructor says, you know, something completely different than I do. And that's totally fine. Um, you know, we learn differently and we teach differently. Uh, the important thing is you find somebody you, that you feel comfortable with. It might not be me, um, but that's the the way you'll do your best work is if you, you know, find that person and you just it's it's about clicking with somebody and I know it's weird because to say you click with somebody online is funny but really you just find your go-to person somebody who who you can easily learn from and uh, and go from there and I I'm not offended if people. <laughs> It's not me that they choose, it's totally fine. You choose who you feel good about. And now I'm, lo I'm loving the way it looks lighter, a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add lighter ones. You could also fast forward these. If you're like done and you're like, I really don't feel like waiting for you, <laughs> just fast forward. I'm just kinda I like to take my time. See how I'm not kind of letting the bunny's ear make me feel like I'm restricted with my, my brush stroke? Definitely don't make yourself feel like that. You can go over the gray a little bit. It's not a big deal. I know it's very hard to explain why it's not a big deal until a little bit later. So my two uh, colors are very different from each other. So... That's fine. All my paintings are different. My my originals are always different than the ones I do. I'm gonna make mine drastically lighter because I like the way that looks. But see, this is the fun part, just kind of experimenting. And it's also probably scary for new people doing this. But just remember, there's absolutely nothing that you can't that you can do that can't be fixed if you don't like it you know and I know there's no undo button but it doesn't mean you can't undo it you know what I mean okay and that's it I think that's fine for now. And just because we move on to something else doesn't mean we can't go back to that thing later. All right, the bunnies should be good to go by now. So what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna put some pink in first. And then we're gonna do our first layer of white. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, pink's fun. So. For pink, we're gonna start with white, okay? So we're gonna take, let's say, two scoops of white, and then you only need a, a bit of red to turn that to pink. And really, the pink that you want might not be the pink I have. You might mix, you might wanna experiment until you get to a color you like. Um, sorry about that, my children are shutting the lights on me. I knew I was down here too long without them bothering me. All right, so the difference between that pink and this pink, see mine looks a little bit more pinkish where this looks on the peach side. The way I did that is I just added a tiny bit of orange. I mean, I'm sorry, yellow to my pink and it brings it to like almost like a, I, I like to say it's like a rustic pink if that makes any sense. And just ex experiment. If you got it to be too peach, you can always add more red. All right, so it's really just about getting to a color that you like. 
And once you have it, so here's where we're gonna kind of, actually I'm gonna wash my brush because it's a bit gooey. And if you wanna use a different brush at any time, just because I'm using one doesn't mean you have to use that one, just switch it. Maybe I'll use my small one to show you. So we're gonna use this pink to kind of get that ear shape back. So you're gonna continue this, um, I'm just gonna call it an almond shape up to there. You don't have to go all the way up. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna, it's gonna be the inside of the bunny's ear. So really that's all we're gonna paint in here is the inside of the bunny's ear. So you can continue with that little paintbrush or you can just go to the bigger paintbrush. Um, don't expect it to cover fully the first time because the gray, we're going over a gray color, so it's gonna have some gray streaks in it. Okay. The, I do want it to, to be nice and uh, light though. Like um, light meaning uh, not a lot of paint. I want it the, the paint you to ease up on the paint because we want it to dry. You're gonna do the same thing on this side. Just the inside and just kind of get that shape and don't don't worry about going all the way down because there's gonna be flowers there if you need to go all the way down go down does not matter I never like to keep it a, like a solid line though I like to make it kind of choppy on the edges and stuff all right so what we're doing down here is we are going to actually uh, think about where we want these eyes because and where we want the flowers to go because I don't want you to put, if you're going to see, we're going to do all this pink around here and, and there's some pink around the eyes. I don't want you to put them in a place now and then not, you know, you want to switch it later. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put some of those flowers in now and some of that uh, green, those green leaves so sponsored by LaCroix just kidding not really okay so the way we what bleh, excuse me the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go dark to light so we're gonna have a like a magenta color, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a nice big fat scoop of white. Now you're gonna add a nice big fat scoop of red. And now you're gonna add another scoop of red. And it's gonna look like, so two scoops of red, one scoop of white. So it's gonna bring you to this like, almost like a, like a hot pink color. I'm gonna have you guys do three scoops of red actually. So you got this nice hot pink color here. Way too hot pinky for sure. So we're gonna add some black into that. Very, very, very small amount. So you're gonna get almost this like purpley kind of I mean, I like to say it's magenta E color, okay? So what we're gonna do first with this color is, whenever I make flowers, I call them like little meatballs because they're like lumpy. So we're just gonna kind of put one lumpy meatball, start with it by the ear here. And all of these flowers are gonna be all clumped in together. And feel free to use your, you know, small paintbrush if you want. And you really don't want this to be, you, want the, you don't want this to be thick paint. You want to keep it nice and light. All right, so now I have one flower. I'm going to put another flower down here. Boop, underneath it. Obviously, they're not going to be the same exact shapes as my flowers because that would be silly to try to measure all that out. So we're gonna, we have one, two, and then we're gonna put one here. They're all gonna be kind of mushed together for now. So 
It's gonna be like one big flower. You get one on this side. And then you got a tiny little one coming out here. All right, so any puddles you see, just get it out. So yeah, it looks like a big, you're like, actually this looks like one big Hawaiian flower. The reason why I did it, I wanted you to visualize each one as we did it. That's why I had you do it that way, okay? Now we're gonna wash that brush off really good. Um, we're actually gonna move to this brush. So now that we have that in, um, now we have a better idea of where we're gonna put the eyes. So we're gonna go back with that pink color. And rabbit eyes kind of like, there's almost like a half circle like this, okay? And then they're gonna go like that. But you don't have to worry about that, you can just, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in pink and it's very forgiving. Don't worry about if it, this is basically the, I have having you do this so you kind of have practice before we go into the black and we'll do the black way later. So just put that in for now. Definitely look at it as like practice. And then I like to kind of, I like to go like this. I know it'll help me with where I'm supposed to place the other eye. Just sketch it out and you're just gonna you're just gonna put some pink in for now. You can even make it look like hair. And as long as they're somewhat even, we're good. And we are going to do the same thing with the nose. So as you can see, you could see a little bit of the mouth here. So again, here's with that imaginary line down the middle. So if you could think about a Y shape, okay? We're gonna do an upside down Y, and then a right side up Y. And you're just gonna Paint it in, but you don't want solid lines. You want to kind of, you want to have it a little bit scribbly. It's weird, really weird to think that your rabbit's gonna, this is gonna turn into that, but trust me, it will. Well, we're gonna eat. Those are my children. All right, keep going. All right, keep going, and I'm gonna go threaten them real quick, and I'll be right back. So I'm back, and of course my phone's gonna die, so if you see a shaking of the camera, that's just me. All right, so I hope you guys are uh, finding this to be kind of not too challenging, uh, but go slow and don't be hard on yourselves, okay? All right, I'm coming back. So what we're going to do next is we are going to, oh, I didn't give myself any green. I'm going to go get some green. We're actually going to do our first layer of um, the leaves. So right here, 
let's do that. Anywhere you find a spot or you can have a new paper plate. What I want you to do is we're gonna do, anywhere you get a little spot, we're gonna do dark green. So let's do two scoops of green. Then we're just gonna add a little bit of black to that, okay? And get to be, get a nice darkish green. But we're actually also gonna add a little bit of white because we have a creamy palette here. So even though we have dark green, I still want it to be creamy like the other colors. All right, so I'm gonna switch. That was my mixing brush, that middle one. I'm gonna to switch to this tiny brush again. And I'm gonna do my first layers of the leaves, okay? So just think of it like, a, almost like a triangle shape, but it's very much more elegant. It's coming to a point. I like to either spin my brush to make a point, or I'll flatten it like this and use it like a razor blade. It's totally up to you. But I just want you to kind of fill that in. And again, you're gonna see lines you're gonna see transparency, don't worry about it right now. Just kind of get something in there. And you're gonna do the same thing over here. Let's get our first leaf in. And then fill it in. If you're doing this at night and your kids are asleep, I'm so sorry that my own children interrupted. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's hard to keep kids busy all day. At least the, the homework, all the classwork keeps us busy for hours. But they're like always like, what's next, what's next? It's exhausting. But hence the reason you know why I paint. <laughs> this is very relaxing after a, a long day. Okay, and then now you're gonna come up here. I think I'll do this one, maybe. And feel, you know, you don't have to do the flowers I do. Feel free to do different flowers. These aren't even like with Javel flower. I just made them up. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's flowers in the world that are like these somewhere, with like little roses. But flowers are magical. I feel like you can you can make up any flower, and somehow somewhere that flower exists. I keep re reiterating this but try to keep your paint nice and thin because even though it's transparent here when we go back again it, it'll cover really nicely all right okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna do a quick another layer quickly of my pink. Now just keep in mind all of this, this wet paint right here and uh, you know take your time. I think I'm gonna make my pink a tad darker. I think it was a bit too light. That is a preference so that is up to you too if you want to do it that way. I like to use this paintbrush, and I like it's the middle flat one. I like to use it up and down here, like this. So if you if you paint on your own a lot, um, you might have different paintbrushes than I have. Um, that's okay, you know, it's absolutely okay. Um, if you have different paint than I do, it's okay. Um, I have my go-to things. Most everything that I use, I get from Michaels. Um, when I was in art school, we'd get everything from Pearl, which is a place that uh, it was a huge art, uh, huge art store. I mean, they had anything that you could ever think of, any project that you ever had to do, 
no matter what, Pearl had it. So they went out of business, unfortunately. But now I just go to Michael's. And they always have what I need. So the, the Michael's, um, this is all paint, artist loft paint. You get these easels at Michael's. Everything in the, in the kits that I send out, it's all the same stuff. So see how I have this, these, these lines are nice and soft. They're not like, you know, lines hard edges or anything like that. If you need to bring your canvas up, that's fine. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do our first layer of the bunny's fur, okay? So just keep in mind this green over here. But what's fun about this is that you get to make your hair that this look furry, and I'll show you how. But first, we're gonna start with this middle brush, and you definitely need white paint. So if you don't have white paint, like if it's if you if it looks like it's all mixed up, get yourself some more white paint. Um, mine is definitely looking like it's all mixed up, so I might have to go get myself more white paint. I definitely do. Um, so clean that brush up, dry the brush off, and get ready for the background. the pump if you're wondering. <laughs> Just the pump. Alright. Here we go. So I, I typically don't use paint really ever out right out of here. I'll scoop it out and I like to put it on my plate. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually first put because it's not gonna look that bright white the first layer that's for sure, but you can kind of get a sense of the bunny's color this first round. So see how I'm not making it super duper solid like a perfect line. I'm kind of starting to dry brush a little bit. And then when it comes to about here, I'm kind of dry brushing. So we're we're gonna use the tiny brush later, the smaller one, to really get those hair, that hair in there. And if you want to start practicing with this bigger one, you can kind of just wisp it in there. And uh, dry brushing in itself is just it's a technique that needs to be practiced to perfection. There's there's really no perfection. I mean, there's not a point where you're perfect at anything, but you can definitely get better and better as you go. And see as I'm going around this leaf here. Um, but you just, you get better at it as you go. So the more you do it, the better you get, just like anything else that you do. And you're gonna, um, I, this is the point where I want you to overlap your background for sure. Okay, so you wanna go over that blue a little bit. And don't, if you know, if, if you get some green in your white, it's not a big deal. But I definitely want you to keep it, again, nice and thin. I want this to be dry by the time we do our next layer of white. Okay, so do the same thing over here. Now it's really quiet, so now I'm suspicious. <laughs> if you have kids, and boys especially, you know what I mean. The biggest thing about painting is, you know, you you have to be patient. Um, 
I think people get discouraged easily because they want to go from this, you know, from, from white canvas to this really fast. And you got to do the work. And, uh, but it's worth it. I think once you see, you know, yourself do a finished painting, I think it, it just feels really good and it, it makes you realize like, hey, yeah, you do have to do the work. You know, it does take work to do this, but you know, you know from doing it that you'll get there. So when you come down here, it gets a little more tricky. So just be very careful going around this flower here. I like to use the sharpness of my flat brush to kind of get around there. And again, don't worry about the transparency. Don't worry about the lines yet. Just kind of go back. I like to transition with the ear. I like to put some hair, use the this brush like it's Basically, you're using the hair and the brush to make hair. And especially, so it's not, so it's not like a, a solid line separating the pink from the white. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do the dry brushing technique. So you don't need a lot of paint on your brush. And I like to go this way. And I like to hold my brush kind of um, vertically. And I like to kind of dry brush those two colors together and kind of merge them like that. So they're sort of like overlapping, like hair. And do the same thing to all the pink on your face. Okay, so when we get down to here, um, what I want you to do is I want you to put a line that's going across here where the paw is going to be because you're actually going to use the gray as the line in between. So you're going to put the paw in and you kind of do one of these. So you're keeping some of that gray in there. Just start practicing, give him the bunny some fur. And really, like, if you think about it, um, say you go out too much and you get some white on the background that you don't like, you just go back with the background color when it's dry, which will be not very, not long from now, and you cut in. So, you're going to do the same thing over here. You separate those two. Be careful around the green and the pink or the magenta. Do the same thing here. Bring it up. Bring it down. It looks pretty sloppy now because it's got all that gray coming through, but our second coat should take care of that. So we are going to, after, after we're done with this, we are going to go to the flower and we're going to work on that and give this bunny some time to dry. Um, I really want you to dry brush around here. That. Um, and we are going to uh, start doing some highlights on those flowers and uh, we'll put another coat of green on there because that'll need another coat of that dark green. Um, it's going to go real quick from here on in. It kind of
comes together really fast at the end. I can't re reiterate this enough that it's got to keep this this paint nice and thin. And there's no rush. You can take your time and make sure you you have really good leverage. Leverage is a big part of painting. Um, if you feel uncomfortable in any s spot, you can flip your canvas around. You know, it's not stuck to the to the um, easel. You can totally pick it up if it makes your leverage better. And you want to be comfortable painting too. Some people like to sit, some people like to stand, some people like to sit stand. There we go, there's our first coat. So as you can see, it's starting to come out, which is good. All right. So before we do anything, let's get another coat of that green in there. So it's dry by the time we go do our second coat of the bunny. I'm gonna actually switch, I was being lazy, but I'm gonna switch to this smaller brush. Thing about painting is everybody goes at their own pace and just because somebody might paint faster doesn't mean that that's the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it I mean everybody goes different paces go at the pace you feel comfortable at pause me if you need to more paint inside the ears because mine still looks a bit transparent but keep on working on what you're working on you go over if you're doing pink on the ears go back over the eyes a little bit I know we're gonna cover most of this with with white and black but I want you to kind of have some, some of that there all right so here's the fun part what we're gonna do is now you're going to choose between the middle brush and the small brush that magenta color you had you're just going to add some white so again i'm going to make this color lighter but we're going to do it twice so i'm going to have just a little pile and i like to keep my my original magenta just in case i want to go back 
but you have to have a, a, a noticeably lighter color. Okay. You definitely might want to, you know, if you feel like that this brush is too much for you, too big for you, switch to your smaller one. I feel like, eh, we'll see. I'm going to try this middle one. It might be too big for me for what I want to do. So you're going to take that lighter color. And now I'm going to start with this. Well, let's see. Let's start with this side one. So we're going to just, all we're going to do is we're going to come around and make petals like that. Okay. And then when you do the middle petals, you kind of want to stagger them like bricks. Okay. You don't want them kind of all going in the same direction. You're going to do the same thing to the next, whatever flower you want next. It doesn't really matter what flower is in front of what flower. You do the same thing down here. You, you honestly get to choose which flowers in front of what flower, because it's your painting, so. And let me see, I think I'll have this guy in, in front of this one here this time. So yeah, they're basically just lines for now. All right. So now I'm gonna to switch to this smaller brush. Now, if you want, you can actually make, you can either use the pink that you have here, which I'm totally out of the ear, the pink that you have for the ear. Um, or mix a, a pink that's a little brighter than what we have. Or you can just add more white to this existing magenta, but we're gonna go for more of a highlight, okay? So every time I do a highlight, I do less. Like, lighter, less is, is my motto. You're gonna go, you're not gonna cover everything you just did, you're just gonna put less. And try to stagger it around. So now you have this is your third pink in these flowers. You have the darkest one that we started with. Now you have a lighter one, and I might put a lighter one after this. Almost like a little tornado in there. So as you can see, this original has darks in there. And as you can see, my pinks are completely different, which is totally fine. You know, original works of art are worth a lot of money because they're original works of art. So I'm gonna even gonna, you could even go in and add some white to that and do an even one more highlight. See, I'm putting less of a highlight this time around. Just gonna st stick in a little highlight in there. All right. And the way I did, I, I just added a little bit more black and red to my original magenta club color. Until I got a very dark. Almost like a dark purple. And you can just separate, my brush is all gooey. You can just separate. It's 
some of these flowers. You can put some darks in the middle to where it's, you know, that it's actually folding in there. You don't have to go crazy with the, with the shadow color in here. Just put some hints of them around so you can see where there's depth. But you're definitely going to see a shadow that, you know, separates each flower. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the green. I like to make my green lighter by using yellow and white. So I'm going to make, you don't want to get, you don't want to jump from the, 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 darkest to the lightest right away. So I'm just gonna come down here with some lights and you're gonna leave that dark behind those flowers. Same thing over here. Start up here, kind of just leave the darks behind the flowers. Start up here. I even like to leave a little bit of dark as the middle of the stem coming down. Same thing over here. I'm going to go like this. The reason why we're leaving that dark under here is because actually those flower, flowers will cast a shadow on that leaf. So I'm going to go and do another, I'm going to go even lighter now, okay, in the same pile, just adding a little bit of yellow and white, and I'm, I'm going to do a highlight here, here, You're not covering everything you just did, you're just putting a bit of a highlight in there. Okay, now you're going to wash that brush. Now you're gonna add a tiny bit of black to that original green pile. So you want a dark, dark, dark black. You can even take a little bit more black and green, put them together if you're running out of that. So really it's just black and green together like you had originally with a tiny bit of white. You just make sure that it's, this might not be darker than my original. Uh, is it? Yeah, I think it is actually. So you're just gonna go enhance the shadow behind the flowers. You might use a little bit more black. So you guys can see it. I'm trying to make my contrasts a little bit uh, more intense so you guys can see it through the camera. go around, maybe make a little stem in the middle, a little line in the middle if you want. Okay. So, now that we did that, we should have ample time to do the rest of the bunny. So, wash that brush off really good. Now we're going to Fill in the rest of that bunny. So again, I like to put my scoop my paint out onto my plate. All right, we're gonna start at that ear. 
gonna go around. The burn practice making some of that hair. You can even use this like a razor blade, like I was telling you. We're gonna go back with the small brush though, so don't worry. If you don't want to experiment with that right now, don't. But just be careful because we just did that leaf over here. Careful going around it. Okay. Same thing. Do the same thing. Follow this all the same thing you just did before. Follow it down. Be careful of that green. Even if at the end, if you're still seeing some gray at the end, we can just do a quick one, a quick cover when it dries. So what we're going to do, um, when we're all done with this, we'll add the eyes in, all the black in. We'll do, um, you know, I want you to make sure that the background's the way you want it. You can always make it a little bit lighter or do whatever. But the end is really like where you adjust everything. Take your time, and if you feel more comfortable with the small one, the small, the small brush, like I feel like it just takes so much time. That's why I try to use as much as this brush as much as possible. All right, just now start your. Touch it before. Kind of use that gray in the background as the shadow. Separate the hand. You're gonna dry brush up with this brush. You really don't need to see a whole lot of pink. Just a hint. But like I said, it, we, it helps, having the pink there helps once you put the uh, black down. Same thing down here, you go on a dry brush until you get to this pink. You don't want it to be a solid line. You want to overlap the two colors. You want them to kind of have it to be nice and feathery. And you definitely don't want to add any black really until you are sure that you, all the coats are finished. I think we might need, depending on how gray your gray was, you might 
we might need another coat, a quick one of white. Same thing come up here, same way we feathered down there. Use your brush like a razor blade in between here. I know this is time consuming, but at least it's coming out now, right? Feels good to see the bunny coming out. You guys did a lot of hard work. See, I'm holding my uh, canvas. I actually really feel comfortable when I'm holding my canvas. I feel the most comfortable. Um, I do that a lot when I'm teaching big groups because I have to walk around. But uh, it's a testament to, you know, your comfort and, and leverage and things like that. Like, it's really important uh, to feel like, you know, it's a good flow. You have a good flow with your uh, brush strokes. If you feel uncomfortable, you're probably not in a good position. And you want to, you know, shift it. And like I said before, all that is different for everybody. So, just because I'm doing something doesn't mean, you know, that's the only way to do it. You, there's a million ways to do it. This is just the way I do it. And I'm teaching you the way I do it. We are almost done. Can you believe that? It's awesome, guys. I say that when I can't even see yours, but I'm sure they're awesome. And that brings me to my next thing. If you guys could tag Artstitution on Facebook or Instagram so I can see your stuff, that would be so cool. I would love to. And feel free to ask me any questions, too, on there. You can message me. Um, as soon as this whole thing is over, I'm going to have uh, some live painting tutorials going on. So, all right. So before we do anything else, I want you to switch again to that little brush. And you're going to take, we're going to do some baby's breath up here. So I, I like to twist, whoop, I like to twist my brush like that, make it nice and pointy. And then I like to, um, I like to use my pinky as a kickstand when I, I'm trying to keep my finger straight. And then I'm just going to dot, 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 dot. And I'm going to go somewhere else, dot, dot. And you can put these anywhere you want. It does not matter. Wherever you think baby's breath needs to be, that's where you can put it. You can put some in here. It really does a lot when you're doing um, these, any kind of flowers when you add the baby's breath it really does a lot at the end just like baby's breath does in a real bouquet it really fills it in hopefully after a bunch of these painting sessions my kids will be used to it and not mess around so much in the meantime I apologize okay Cool. It's getting there. I think we're gonna need another coat, real quick, another coat in the, in, on the bunny. So do that real quick, and then we do the back, and then we're done. All right. I really, it, it, this is killing me that I can't like see everybody. <gasps> uh, but in time, I hope everybody's staying home and staying safe and being smart. 
I plan on quarantining myself as long as possible. I do not want to get that. I do not want to feel like I can't paint, like I'm too sick to paint. I do not want to give it to my children. So, as long as the squirrels don't have it, then I think we're okay. Again, I don't have a, a hard edge. I'm kind of just softening this with that dry brushing technique. And it's a, it's a very soft bunny, so keep that in mind. There is no point where you feel, you know, I don't want you to ever feel like you can't go back into it, because at the end, it's fun because that's when you can like, go back and go to the back, back to the background. You can, you know, move around the painting, work on whichever part you want. And that really just kind of tightens it up at the end. Okay, so I know I told you that I was going to show you how to do all this with a smaller brush, so I'm going to do that. Let me just get this rest of this ear in. Basically, you're gonna do the same same thing. I like to spin my brush so it's pointy, and then I like to use my pinky as a kickstand, and then I'm just gonna make little hairs like this coming out. And feel free to, um, you know, do as many coats of white as you feel necessary. Maybe you need another one, who knows? Maybe your gray was really dark. And that's okay. You know, I have some areas on mine that are temperamental. That just happens sometimes. Like that area, so I know I'll have to go back later. And that's fine. It is what it is. I think that's everybody's new phrase nowadays it is what it is what are you going to do about it we're almost done I don't know why I feel like I'm by myself, but I feel like there's awkward silences. <laughs> I get so in the zone when I paint that I'm sure like there's points where I'm just going to zone, totally completely zone out and forget that the camera's on. <laughs> or I'll just get so used to talking to myself that I'll do it all the time. Either way, it's harmless, I guess. As you can see, I'm, you know, my bunny doesn't look entirely the same as that bunny. It doesn't really matter. Especially because nobody's going to be comparing your bunny to any original. Alright, we're getting near the end. So the scary part for a lot of people is when you add black on top of all this, but you know, 
because we're going to have to do it anyway. guy's eye. Girl, guy, I know. Almost look like Dr. Evil. So you don't, we don't have to be as thin with the paint anymore, so don't be, you know, scared of that. You can feel free to go a little bit thicker. And go back if you need to. Any, any spots that are oop, temperamental. Go back, go over. Like I said, we all sort of had different grays, I'm sure, if everybody did. So certain grays would be darker than others. And just fill it in until, basically, until you're happy with it. Head towards the end, you can definitely use thicker paint because you don't have to be worrying about putting another coat on it or anything. Hopefully, these videos will get more professional as they go on. I say videos, but we, get, we haven't had videos in ages. Videos, they still call it videos, I guess. These, you might hear screaming children in the background, wrestling. You never know. Stay tuned. People may watch it and not even paint, just for the entertainment of my children in the background. Alright. I think we're just about ready. Looks good. <clears throat> Here we go. You ready? We're going to do some black. So, before we hit go straight up into black, I want you to mix a gray. Again, just mix yourself a nice light gray. I got some red in there, that's okay. All right, it doesn't matter. I just, be, sometimes it's a little bit less nerve wracking when you go with gray first. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the gray and do the half circle the bunny eye. Okay. And we're going to do the half circle. I'm having you do it in gray because uh, so it's less scary. For down here, we don't really need to do that. I think we're okay. But when you still have this gray, what I want you to do is we're gonna start making, um, here's where I really want you to flatten, flatten, and I want you to use it like a razor blade. Okay, so, cause we're gonna do four whiskers, okay? One, two, three, Now, because my leverage, it's funny over here, I'm actually gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and we'll do a smaller one down here. 
four. This one's so dark here, I feel like I need to just, this one's gonna distract me. So you definitely want everything to be balanced. So if that one's a little bit thicker, you wanna make it thicker on that side. And you're gonna do the same thing with white. You flatten your paintbrush and see where you're gonna continue the whisker onto the background. And again, my leverage is all funky that way. So I'm gonna continue. See, you can put a little one there if you want. Okay. Now, what's cool about this is if you've screwed up in any, like if you feel like they're too thick or whatever, you just go back over in white. Like that. It's very forgiving. Okay. And you'll, you'll start getting the whole leverage thing as you go. All right, so now that the eyes, you feel like the eyes are in a good spot, now we're going with black. So if you wanna ease into it and start, I never, like I said, I'm gonna put black on my plate. If you wanna start by putting the band around the head here first, Feel free to do that. Don't worry if it's turning gray. it and you feel more comfortable we're gonna go and do the eye go slow Make mine look kind of choppy-ish. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. This eye looks way bigger, but it's okay. Now, again, if you feel like your leverage is funky, like I do right now, you can just move it. Okay, and now we're gonna go down here, and we are gonna do a lot, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna flatten my, paintbrush, if it's easier for you to put the line in the middle first, you put the line in the middle, and then go right in between the pink. Then you're going to go 
down and I cannot reach so I'm gonna do that. You're also gonna do three little dots or four, four whatever you want. If you want to actually it might be easier to use the back if you dip the back of your paintbrush in the black you can do little dots. left is the gleam in the eye. So you're going to dip your brush in the white. You're really going to and that's it. And then at the end, if you want to um, go around and uh, fix anything that you want, now's the time to do it. If you want to make your background a little bit different, now's the time to do it. So um, if you feel like you need another layer of white, just be cautious of the black. Um, but now is the time, you know, to do it. See, I, as I'm looking at mine, I kind of feel like I needed, need a little tiny bit more, you know, pink around here just to even out the other side. And I, up. Oh. And that's all stuff I can do later. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I had a blast. And thanks for painting with me. Till next time.